well-known dish back in back in the um, fairly late eighties, early nineties. But nowadays, it's very more popular. At, and even in Ireland now, it's more and as buffalo as well as another thing. And it just showed us ways, different ways to cook it, and different ways to marinate it, and different marinades. And um, and I use a lot of those ideas of what I of what I learned out there, and as I said, what I learned in London to, you know, to get me going here t here today. So. And you could just go on and on about this. Did you go on safari when you were in Africa? Yeah, I did in Tanzania. I did all the Serengeti and the Orangora crater and the, uh, um, um, it was four, it was four different places I went. Um, when I was in Manibia, I went into uh, the um, Natasha, or is it not, not Natasha, um, there was another national park up there um, in, in, in Manibia. Um, I can't remember, uh, off the, I can't remember off the top of my head now what the name it was. It'll come back to me in a few minutes. <laughs> And uh, when I went to the safari, it was brilliant. I mean, just seeing all the wild animals out in the, out in their natural habitats. So it was, it was fantastic. Do you play golf? Um, that is a good question. Um, I go for I go for a walk. So I, I like to, uh, I play kind of army golf. A little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. <laughs> sometimes straight down. So if I'm lucky, I I try to, I try to play golf. I'm not. A, I wouldn't be. A, I wouldn't be a Pori Carrington or a, or a um, Vijay Singh or anything like that or Tiger Woods. Um, so, but I, I, mean, I enjoy going out. I mean, I'm not very good at it, but I'm, I enjoy going out and I enjoy, uh, you know, just having like this, the stroll, the walk around. So, and then the, but it, it gets frustrating. I mean, you hit one good shot and then you hit five bad ones, you know. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it gets a little bit frustrating sometimes. And sometimes I say, that's it, I'm not, never playing again. And then I hit one good sh last shot of the day. It might be the best shot I've ever hit. And it'll bring you back out again the next time. And hopefully and then it's the same story over and over again. I'm thinking Ireland and England and South Africa are all good golf players. Yes, they are. All, yes, well, they are. So, but, uh, um, it was more actually when I came over here that I actually started picking up the golf. Really? But I actually hold, I hold the uh, golf club backwards. So like the hurley grip. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, it's amazing how uh, when you're out there and you know, like, when sometimes when it gets backed up, and you're there at the tee box, ready to tee off, and the, there's another foursome waiting to come up behind you, and they're, you can see them, they're looking at you peculiarly, and you're holding the club backwards, <laughs> and uh, next thing, uh, you hit the ball, and they're, they're, you're hoping that you'll get in contact with it, and it'll go straight, and uh, they're like, wow, and it makes it, everybody comments on it, how, uh, like, the, the backward grip, <laughs> especially if you hit it right, so. I would imagine. Yeah, that's, that's when the main, the main, uh, the main comments come in, like, but if you hit it to the, like, barely past the lady's tee, <laughs> then people are like say, ah, yeah, that's why, that's why he's not able to hit it right, so. So when did you decide to come here, Patrick? Um, back in, nine, I'm here nine years, I'll be actually here 10 years on November 1st of, of 2006, so I came over here on November 1st, uh, 2000, uh, 1995, 1996, sorry, so. And where did you arrive? I came into uh, I've um, I came over to Greenwich. I actually moved. I had a sister living in Greenwich. The sister that's living in Florida now, she had a spare apartment or she had an apartment in in Greenwich with a spare room in it. And uh, I'd actually sorry. I'd come prior. I was I'd come over on the uh, in January of that same year for a vacation. Um, so I was on my way over to Vancouver, and I stopped off here in New York. And I'm like, whoa, it's nice. And uh, I went to Vancouver, and that was nice as well. And uh, I came back, and I, I did Vancouver, Seattle, and um, and uh, San Francisco, and then I did back to New York. And I liked it. And it was the time of the bad, you had a bad snowstorm that year, and I got stuck in London for three days, and that's that's a different story. But um, I went back to Ireland, and I I don't know why I just got a uh, a longing to come back to uh, back here to New York, or back to Connecticut, because I said, and then especially she had a spare room in her uh, apartment, and it was a uh, an opportunity I said I couldn't reach, I couldn't uh, turn down, so I came as I came over on the first of November, and I came over to her. And then when I came over, um, um, I can remember it was it was it was, a, it was it was raining that day, and uh, I was like, oh my goodness, the day I came over, and it was a Friday, and uh, that Saturday was a beautiful day, and uh, I can always remember going. To, a friend of mine brought me down. A friend of mine brought me around Greenwich Avenue, show me, and I was like walking up Greenwich Avenue, and um, Glenn Close was walking down against me, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Like, "Oh, this." She had, a, I could not. She had her little. She had a child with her and a little dog, and I just walking down Greenwich Avenue, I was like, "Oh my goodness!" I was like, 
this is better than Hollywood. So yeah. and, uh, um, but then I remember uh, we, where we were parked in the car park in, uh, in off, just off Greenwich Avenue, this lady had pulled in with her Audi and she'd pulled too far ahead of the, and uh, when she went to reverse out, the, uh, the front fender had got stuck in the, the, uh, br um, the, the mar or brick, the concrete, whatever things that were there. And uh, it had fallen off and she was like, oh, what am I gonna do? And uh, so I said, don't worry. So I'm not afraid of the dirt. I went down on my back and said, it's messing around and pushing it and dragging it. But eventually I got it on and she was like, oh, she was all excited and tried to give me this tip. And I said, no, nah, don't worry about it. Because I wasn't used to the tipping thing. Because I mean, you know, in Ireland, back in, in Ireland and England, they didn't really tip as such. Tipping wasn't a big thing. So I was like, no, nah, don't worry about it. You'll get me for a drink another day. So, and that was, that was, my, that was my first day here in, uh, in Connecticut. So it was, I, was, I was like, whoa. Did you so, keep in touch with her? Who, the? The lady who offered you the tip? No, <laughs> no, that was the end of it. She went off into the, into, the, into the sunset or into the horizon and that was the end of it. But um, I had planned, I'd only planned to come over here for six months. I said I'd come over here for six months and get my, activate my green. One of, the, one of the main reasons, another reason I decided to come over was to, um, to get to activate my green card. So I came over and activated that and I said oh, six months and then I'm off to New Zealand. I was on my way to New Zealand and uh, I said I'd come to Connecticut for six months, make some money, then travel across America and go over as far as San Francisco fly out of San Francisco to Hawaii, Hawaii into Los, or into, uh, into New Zealand. But um, I've got to San Francisco. That's as far west as I've gone. So you haven't circumnavigated? No, uh, not yet, not yet. I've, I've been to uh, 46 of the states wow. uh, in America. So there's, there's still the Hawaii, Alaska, are two of the name, next ones I want to go to see. Oregon is another one I want to see as well. You so, really do have itchy feet. Yeah, so, well, <laughs> so yeah, it's nice to see how, I mean, how the different cultures live. And I mean, even, even here in America, I mean, a lot of people say to me like, uh, oh, I'd love to go to Europe. I'd love to go to, you know, see how different people live in Europe. America is just as diverse in, in culture and in, in, in the way people are. I mean, if you go down, if you go up to Maine, there is a certain kind of people up there. If you go to Kentucky or down to Tennessee or something like that, it's totally different. And it's, I mean, it's, it's nice way to see the, the the friendliness of different people as well, and and, and uh, you know how people are and how people live, you know, and in Texas, of course, the biggest I I never seen so many cattle in my whole life. Like there was big ranch there, like oh my goodness, to the as far into the horizon, animals all over the place. Oklahoma was beautiful as well. Actually, I got stopped for speeding in Oklahoma once on the way back from my first time traveling around America. I was uh, I have a heavy foot and. Uh, I was stopped for speeding in Oklahoma, and uh, next thing, uh, I had um, the car I rented was through an English pa an English driver's license, because I was, you know, I was thinking ahead, and because uh, I didn't live in L London anymore, so you know, let it off over there. So um, next thing, um, he goes, he he's, he kind of we had a pickup truck, and it was uh, I had my license and stuff in the, in my rucksack in the back of the truck, and uh, next thing he, he um, asked me for license registration, so. I went out to get my license out of, out of the thing. The, the pouch I had it in wasn't there. I was ruffling around and I was like, oh, where the hell is it gone? I've lost it. Like well, somebody had stolen it. The next thing I was rooting around, I could see him, this, this police officer taking a few steps back and unclipping his holster. And next thing I could, all I could see was myself, uh, sorry, a truck coming by, backfiring, and me lying dead on the, on the <laughs> side of the street. Like, uh, I was like, but uh, um, next thing Lisa, my wife now, uh, um, was with me and she actually the pouch I would taken out the pouch and left it in the cab off the actual truck and she's oh I found it so the next thing I went and gave him the English driver's license and he told me to sit into his cruiser and I was like I was like wow <laughs> looking all around I was gadgets everywhere and I was like whoa so the next thing uh, he sat there writing out a ticket and he says well have you any and the English licenses don't have a picture on it and um, I, he says have you any picture ID so I said well I got my Irish passport and he goes, oh, you're Irish? And I says, yeah. And next thing uh, he starts talking about Ireland and, uh, and he's, he says, my ancestry is Irish and all this. And uh, he says, I'd like to go over there. And uh, next thing he says, well, I suppose I can't give you a ticket. And he flips over and he gives, I have to give you at least a warning. <laughs> so I says, oh, thanks very much. So and he gives me the next thing he was on about Ireland and all this. And I said, like, how was Oklahoma? Was, actually, Oklahoma was very like Ireland, I thought. So very green and lush. So, very but, flat. Yeah, well, yeah. So what it was green, the green, the greenness I thought of, that's what it reminded me of Ireland. And uh, another place that reminded me of Ireland here in America was uh, Martha's Vineyard. 
I think that's, that reminds me of Farland, like Connemara in a way. So, With the rocks? Yeah, the kind of the ruggedness and the, the, uh, the kind of the, the landscape and the roads and stuff like that, the whole, just the general landscape and the, the, the place of it. It was, uh, it was that reminds me, there are two kind of places that kind of thought of home. <laughs> so what made you decide to stay once you were here? Um, what made me, it just, time went by. Just suddenly it was it, the six months, then it went into the year, and then it went into two years, and then it went into three years, four years, five years, nine years. So that's uh, that's the reason why someone had it. Just time is. It was funny when when I came over here first as well. I was only over here two weeks, and I was working down in a restaurant in uh, in uh, Byram, and um, I met a girl from Longford. I think she's Leitrim or Longford, and I was chatting away, and it's like we're talking here. Um, how long are you over here? And she said, I'm here six years. And uh, I told her, I was, I'm going to be here for six months. I'm on my way out. And she said, I said, six years is a long time. She says, believe me, says, the time has flown. And I said to her, no, six months, that's it. I'm out of here. And nine, as Mark, Mark, true to her word, time has flown. I mean, it's nine years has just gone like that. <laughs> so. And what have you been doing with yourself for nine years? Um, I, when I came over here first, I was... Um, I was working in a restaurant in Byram, as I said, for a small while, and then I got another job. The main, the first stable job I got it was um, I started working on New Year's Eve down in um, Scarsdale, in a in an Irish place down there, and uh, then I left that and I, I tra That's when I went travelling around America, and then when I came back, I started working down in uh, uh, in Riverdale, in the Riverdale Steakhouse, and I worked there for um, a year and a half to two years. And then I moved from there back up to. I always lived. I always lived here, in um, in Connecticut, apart from apart from uh, six months. But um, I moved from Riverdale Steakhouse in south, up to South Norwalk to work. I worked in O'Neill's down in South Norwalk, and uh, kind of for six months in between there, I went and lived in San Diego, in California for six months, which was great. I enjoyed it out there. And uh, when I came back, and I went back to O'Neill's working there, and I left O'Neill's to come up here and open my own restaurant in in Black Rock. So I which, uh, I opened four months ago. And how's that going? It's going very very well. We're very happy with the um, with the response we've got, and uh, I mean the the people of uh, Fairfield and the surrounding areas of um, Fairfield and Bridgeport and surrounding areas have actually opened uh, have welcomed us with wo open arms, and uh, have been have, you know treated us very well and. I very uh, I mean, we're doing very well down there. Yeah, when you were talking before about Irish chefs, you know, I was I've been to the field and I was surprised by your your menu. It really is extensive and different. And yeah, it's not. It's um, we decide when we were doing the field. Um, the name of the restaurant is the field. When we were doing the field, we decided we wanted a first of all the name to be just a simple name that you know people that can kind of. Um, it can. We didn't want to go Irish, you know, full blown Irish in there. We wanted to have it as a place for everybody, you know, not just the Irish people. For everybody, the Irish Americans, the Americans themselves, the um, Italian Americans. You know, we wanted to keep it. A, we want. Why we we wanted to have it a vast thing, but we wanted. We did, we always wanted to keep in touch with our roots. So that's why we called it a field, and it was we named it after a play, an Irish playwright, John B. Kane, who was from the Stole in County Kerry. And uh, one of his most famous plays that he wrote was later turned into a, uh, a movie called The Field, which Richard Harris was, uh, played the Bull McCabe. And he was actually nominated for an Oscar on, on, for his performance in, the, in that movie. Um, but that's where we named it out. So we, even though we didn't want to go Irish, full-blown Irish, we wanted to go a nice soft Irish, but we wanted to keep our roots. And our menu as well, I mean, our menu kind of, relays that I mean it's not it's not just the corned beef and cabbage the shepherd's pie we even though we carry the shepherd's pie and the lamb stew and the fish and chips the, the traditional fare but we also have a a huge array of other steaks seafood and pastas which I learned that which kind of kind of comes from my travel my travels around the world so do you think that reflects the younger generation of Irish people um yes I do think so I mean I think um, I mean that's uh, going back to what I said earlier on about the, how Ireland has come along. 
in um, in its culinary um, um, attitudes because I mean, people are more willing to exper um, experiment with new with new foods and with new tastes. Before, is that it was all well done. Now, as people are eating their meats a lot less, like rare and some medium rares and something like that, people are more they're experiment experimenting more. And as well, I, mean, I think what a lot of the things that people have a lot of people immigrated when they were younger. And now they've actually went back home to Ireland and are living in Ireland now and are looking for the same kind of um, things they had while they were abroad, like that they lived, when they lived in Australia, they lived in here in America and also in England. So they're looking for those kind of things. So, and it has, it kind of, it has brought Ireland along, uh, brought, all, brought it a long way in the, culinary, um, in the culinary arts. And that's why people are even looking for um, things over here now as well. I mean, people want a different array of stuff. I mean, they, don't, they, want, to, I mean, they want to keep, as I said, we want, we're going to keep our heritage and our, our roots are Irish, but we want to offer a different array of different uh, different items in the menu. So that's great. So, and you told us before that you had a special event this year on February first. Oh yeah, February first we had our official opening. Um, we had the mayor Fabrizi who um, who did a fantastic job of um, doing the grand opening, and um, he. Um, he unfortunately he couldn't stay very long, but he, he enjoyed himself very thoroughly, and he's he's been back a couple of numerous occasions for dinner and for just socialise there in the in the establishment in the field, and uh, he um, he's a um, so we had our as I said, we had our official opening on February first, and that went down a treat, so and we're actually having to, on Thursday the ninth of uh, of March of this month we're actually having a fundraiser for children's cancer. So I'm actually shaving my head. So if, was, if, was, if you're back next, if, was, if you want to do another shop, uh, clip on me next week, I'll be bold. <laughs> so, St. Baldrick's, yeah. So we're doing that. Uh, it's native, a, a local child that's here in, um, in Fairfield. So um, he's, he was diagnosed with having cancer. So um, a year and a half ago, but he's, he's got the all clear and tip wood, he'll, um, he'll remain that way for the rest of his life, uh, cancer free. Excellent. Yeah, so we're, having a, we're planning a big event on, uh, on uh, the 9th of March. And in terms of your personal life, this was a special year for you too, was it not? Ah, yes, I'm afraid. So after uh, after nine years, um, we finally tied a knot. Myself and my uh, my wife or my girlfriend now, or whatever you want to call it, want to call her wife. Um, I still haven't got used to saying the, the wife. <laughs> so um, yeah, we got I got married on the on the second uh, of uh, February of this year. So which is the day after the grand opening, as we had family and friends over. My, some of my family and some of our family were over from Ireland as we had friends up around here so we, we decided to tie the knot so eventually after not after 10 years so and uh, it was a it was a kind of a whirlwind wedding so <laughs> the whole of uh, 12 hours notice you want to talk about that oh a um might as well um the week prior to uh, our grand opening uh, um we had a uh, a couple in and uh, I got talking to him and uh, like as I said, being theatrical and being a performer, you have to go over and communicate. And I was talking away to him and there was she was um, it was a lady that was in there and she was uh, with a, a friend of hers, and she was asking me about how long we were open and stuff like that. And I told her we were only open three months and uh, she said, oh, she's new to the neighbourhood as well because she's the new minister for uh, Saint Mark's Lutheran Church down the road in in Black Rock and. Um, then she went on about how we, were we married and stuff like that, and I said no. How we were supposed to get married last October, but with opening the restaurant, we had to put it on hold. And her friend pipes up and says, "Oh, it'd be great if uh, Bess would would uh, would marry you and it'd be her first uh, official ceremony and all this." So I was kind of like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah." But being Irish Catholic and I don't know if Lutheran, because I didn't really know what Lutheran was, and like you know, being a, uh, and uh, she's like, "Oh, Bet would love to do it." Bet was the minister's name and. Uh, Bet had love to do it and all this. So um, she went and uh, I kind of spoke a little bit more about kind of changed the subject a little bit and kind of fobbed her off a little bit more. And so I said, oh, was that the time I had to go away? And I ran off and left them and I let them to their meal and uh, thought nothing more of it. And as they were leaving, I said, listen, come back on the 1st of February for our official opening. So on the 1st of February, she comes in anyway, um, the minister from this uh, St. Mark's Church and says, um, so I went over talking to her again, totally forgetting what our uh, our conversation of our pre the previous week was about, and, and uh, 
And next thing she goes, oh, I'd love to marry you. It'd be great and all this. It would only take three hours of your time to go out and get married. And I like, all I had to do was sit down and you know, go over a few things. And I was like, oh, I don't have the time. And I was like, again, I was trying to put it off. Like after I said nine years, I was hoping to get a couple more years out of it. <laughs> anyway, um, so next thing, um, so um, she goes and then she goes, oh, you know, I'd love to do it. It'd be great. I'd love, you know, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I was saying, well, I don't know, Lutheran, Irish, Catholic, you know. I was trying to trying to throw a few, I, did, I was trying to put it off without actually offending her. And uh, with that, I made Lisa, my, my wife, comes walking over and I, and I said, here, here's Lisa. And I passed her over, I passed Lisa over onto Beth and I went off and went off socializing with other people, not knowing that Lisa had a few uh, glasses of wine in her. But anyway, Lisa comes up to me that night anyway, and says to me, oh, we're getting married in the morning. And I went, what? So I said, like, yeah, whatever. So I fobbed it off again. And 2.30 that night on the way home in the car, she goes to me, yeah, we have to be, at, we have to be up there at 1 o'clock. We're getting married tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And I'm like, oh, Christ. So, oops. I said, oh, I said, oh right. So um, 1 o'clock, or next day came anyway, the 2nd of February came. And uh, so um, my family... My family had come up as well. My brothers and sisters were over for the grand opening and we were supposed to go to the casino. So they were all there at 12 o'clock waiting to go to the casino. So um, sitting in the car, impatient to go. And I says, hold oh, on, come with me. We have, to, we have one more little thing to do. I said, come on, we want to go to the casino. And I said, it'll only take an hour. I'm going to get married. And now you've seen their faces drop. Like, you know, I'd like, you're kidding me. Like, oh. And one of my sisters, one of my sisters goes, says, I knew it, Fanula. I knew you were going to get married. I knew it. So she was, um, she was, um, so we went down and got married and um, that was the end, we didn't go, we didn't get managed, we didn't manage to go to the casino, so um, Beth herself actually managed to, don't ask me how she did it, or she managed to get all the paperwork done that morning and she had everything, so we, so it was all official, so, so we got a, a whirlwind winning, but it, it caused a few, uh, few arguments and a few, uh, argument, or a few debates in our, in our, in our family, like, why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you know? Why didn't you let us know we'd have come up? My, my sister down in Florida, oh, why didn't you tell me I'd have definitely come up? And I says, well, I didn't know until eight hours or 10 hours prior to getting married. So I mean, you know, there wasn't time to tell you. So, and then my mother was, oh, I'd have come over. And so we're, uh, we're actually going home to Ireland in, in, uh, in July to actually do the official, the official um, uh, wedding and stuff like that. Don't ask me why we did it on the 2nd of February, but it, it was done. So. <laughs> Where will you get married in Ireland? In Galway, in County Galway, in um, in Rye, because uh, my wife is from um, Athenry, County Galway. Okay. So, Lisa Doherty, in Mazarine, County Galway. Okay. So, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. So, <laughs> so it's, it's been a it's been a fantastic month. It's been a short month, but a fantastic month. <laughs> so. Okay. Let me just uh, look through here. Um. Well, in terms of being here, do you have any advice for young Irish people who are thinking of coming? Um, ad ooh, advice, man. I'm not. I'm not a very good person for giving advice, man. Uh, um, uh, you know, just come over and be yourself, man. I mean, I, I mean um, again, I'm not. I'm not a great person for giving advice, man. If I, if people come over, young people come over to here to America, I mean, I just, you know. Just try to be themselves and try to you know try to just do their best and if uh, if you do your best, people will respect you for for that and try to you know just uh, you know respect yourself and respect others. That's basically the only respect I could, or the only bit of advice I could give to anybody. Now, how about for you? What are your plans looking like for the future? Oh, I um. Let me get over, let me get this year over and done with first because I mean, as I said, I, mean, I I. With opening this restaurant, it's it's just totally. Um, it's been more work than I actually totally ima uh, predicted or imagined. I mean, it's been. I mean, it's it's been seven days a week, twelve twenty four hours a day. You know, and I've been just leaving, living, breathing this restaurant at the moment. Um, so, um, what the what the next year brings, or what? I mean, hopefully, hopefully down the down the path, I man, down the. I mean, this year we'll as get we'll get over this. If I get over this year successfully, um, hopefully there'll be another restaurant down the down the path, and then maybe you never know. It might be a chain of fields, <laughs> you know, 
it might be a meadow or an estate. So, <laughs> so in yeah, well, I don't, well, yeah, I would, I mean, I wouldn't, I will, I've always, if this place hadn't come, come true, I've, I was worth considering moving home, which a lot of people, a lot of the Irish have done, I've actually moved back to Ireland. Um, but um, now that I've, now that I've opened this place, I'm glad I've done it. And I'm, I'm so looking forward to years to come here in Connecticut and in, in, the, in the New England area. And eventually, would you consider retiring in Ireland, or would you like to just stay here? Um, too way, too far away to think about. It's I mean I again I mean, I'm just taking one step at a time. I mean I, I mean again I, I you don't and one thing I've learned over the years never I never predict or never try to foresee you know the um, the future. You know I just take I mean I I, I hopefully I mean I I I've a focus I'm focused on what I want to do. But something like that, I mean, I'll just take it I mean, one day at a time, you know. So I mean, hopefully, and that'll hopefully that every day will be a, a successful day, and you know, every day will be good. I hope so. Thank you. So, is there anything I haven't asked you about that you'd like to add? Um, no, I think I think you've covered a lot, and uh, I'll probably let's see what well. I'm not quite sure, to be honest, yeah. Um, do you think you need to ask any, any more questions or anything else? Do you need to know anything? Well, I, I mean, I have more questions, okay. but I thought, you know, if you, I've had a wonderful time talking to you. You're a great conversationalist. You have well, so many interesting stories. Well, I have a habit of kind of rambling on a little bit and, you know, I, I kind of go on and a little bit and a little bit and it's kind of, I kind of want, go off the beaten tra track sometimes. So I, mean, I should have told you that in the beginning to kind of steer me back onto the track and into the right, uh, right road. No, but you hear the most interesting things when you go down. Yeah, side you get sidetracked. Yeah, it gets it gets sidetracked off to that thing. So, but um, I, I um, as I said, when I've I've enjoyed every um, moment I have here, and I mean it's it's great. I mean it's I mean, I've I've always even people even when I go home when I lived in England and even lived abroad all these years, people have always when I go home to Ireland, people say to me, "Oh, when are you going home?" And I said, "Well, this is my home. I've always I've always I would." I think Ireland is living in no matter where I live, even if I live here to the to the rest to the day I die, I, I've all, I'll always class Ireland as my home. I'll always class Kildysert as my home. It's it'll be even though you know I've, you know the time comes when I mightn't even go back, I mightn't go back there for years. But I mean, if somebody ever says where's your home, I will always say Kildysert, kind of clear. So and that's so, and I mean, as I said, I mean, hopefully I'll even though. Even though when I go home, another thing when I go home as well, people say, "Oh, you're you're," you know, when I lived in England for those years, to say, "Oh, you've got a, a strong English English accent." I would, and now that when I go home, people say I've got a strong American accent. I don't think so. I think I think I've still got a very strong Irish accent, but I've just I've adapted my my way of speaking and.